In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. morning. Welcome. Special welcome to our visitors and guests. There's much discussion these days about the potential for an energy crisis. Renewable energy is an ever-expanding priority as we seek to move away from fossil fuels, concerned about the potential for global warming and climate change. Some see it as essential to save the planet and protect the people who live on it. Others see it as another grab for power, not for energy power, but for political and economic power. Power is a popular word. Knowledge is power, money is power, there are power struggles, willpower, world power, the power of suggestion, the power of positive thinking, nuclear power, wind power, solar power, power structures, and power to the people. People are trying to save themselves these days by all kinds of power. White power, black power, girl power, water power, air power, political power, and power naps. Despite all of this vying for power, many of us today feel powerless. Why? Because the real energy crisis in the world is a human one within you, within me, within every person. The two blind men in today's gospel from the seventh Sunday of Matthew had also an energy crisis. They did not have the power to overcome their physical blindness. So they followed someone they heard might have that power, Jesus. And they begged him, have mercy on us, son of David. Before doing anything, Jesus asked them, do you believe that I am able to do this? In other words, he's saying to them, do you believe I have the power to do what you are asking? And they replied, yes, Lord. And Jesus touched them, saying, according to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were opened, and they received their sight. The blind men solved their energy crisis by coming to the true source of power, Jesus Christ, who is God and Lord of the universe. And this, of course, was just reminded, we were just reminded of this revelation in the event of the transfiguration on Mount Tabor. However, many of us are cut off from our genuine true source of power because we close our lives off from the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church. We don't have enough power to do what is right, nor do we have enough willpower to resist temptation and refrain from doing wrong. All of those other sources of power that we just mentioned will eventually fail us. Only one power remains that is durable and dependable, and that is God himself. In the gospel readings for the Feast of the Transfiguration, for both the Orthros, which came from Luke, and the liturgy, which came from Matthew, we heard about Jesus revealing his divine glory before his apostles, Peter, James, and John. His face shined brighter than the sun, and his garments became white as light. Now think about how much energy and light the sun generates, O Helios. It gives us bright days and warm summers from 93 million miles away. And if created that sun, just think how much energy and light his son, Oyos, Jesus, must have. That's power. And this is not, however, the first time that God demonstrated his power to the people. 
Look at the battle between David and Goliath. David was a young and small, was young and small, but he was in a sense elected to represent the Israelites in the battle of the Phil- against the Philistines who were rep- represented by a giant, the soldier Goliath. And whoever would, whoever would win this battle would determine the fate of the two nations. The stakes were extremely high. We hear in the first book of Samuel that when David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of powers, the God, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with the sword and the spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands." As you and I, as we fight against our giants, we must remember that the battle is the Lord's. And our weapon is God's strength, God's power. Each of us has at least one giant to fight. With some, it's a physical ailment. With others, it's a bad habit. Some may fear the future. For many, it's a deep sorrow of loss which has disturbed their peace and happiness. The other example of God revealing his power before and to the Israelites was the fight against the Assyrians. And we hear how God's power intervened on their behalf. In the book of 2 Kings, it says, And it came to pass on a certain night that the angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. And when people arose early in the morning, there were the corpses all dead. One angel. That's power. When Jesus was betrayed by Judas and arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, we read that one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand, drew his sword, and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. But Jesus said to him, put your sword in its place, for all who take the sword shall perish by the sword. Do you not think that I can now pray to my Father, and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? A legion of Roman soldiers consisted of 5,000 men, so Jesus was talking about summoning 60,000 angels. That's power. And this event demonstrates another attribute about God's power. It's infinite. It's all-powerful. It's all-knowing. It's almighty. But it does have limitations. Self-imposed restrictions. Because God will never force anyone to do anything against their will. He leads. He encourages. He admonishes. But he never forces us. This is important to remember. As some may remember, Rabbi Harold Kushner wrote a book in 1981 that became a bestseller entitled When Bad Things Happen to Good People. His own son died at the age of 14 from progeria, a tragic illness of accelerated aging. Kushner attempted in his book to answer the question, how can a loving God allow such terrible evil in the world? 
What Kushner came up with, his conclusion, was this. God is indeed all-loving, but he is not all-powerful. Bad things happen because they are simply beyond God's control. The God that Kushner is describing is not the almighty God of the Bible. Father Anthony Cornuris wrote in his book, Meet Jesus in the Sunday Gospels, that if bad things happen to good people, they happen because God is in total control. He allows even bad things to happen to us as he did to his own son because God is at work in our lives, testing us, strengthening us, molding us, making us, preparing us for eternity. We acknowledge, or we should attempt to acknowledge and admit our human energy crisis. It is spiritual in nature. Why? Because we fail to acknowledge the two world, the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of prayer. Appliances like a refrigerator, a microwave oven, electronics like televisions and sound systems are designed and built to utilize a current of electricity for power and for function. If the electricity is not flowing, the is useless. It cannot work. It's exactly the same way for us. God designed and created us so that our whole being springs to life the moment we receive his power. The Holy Spirit is our electricity, and prayer is how we plug in to that power. And that power, whether it be horsepower, water power, wind power, steam power, nuclear power, whatever, it's not helpful until it is harnessed. And no human life ever truly produces until it is connected with the power of God. A spinal injury can cut off the electrical signals from the brain to the legs and to the arms. And if we allow ourselves to be cut off spiritually from Christ, who is the head of the church, then our soul loses the power to discern good from evil, and it loses the power to resist temptation. My brothers and sisters, as we conclude today, let us remember the words of our patron apostle Paul, who spoke about the power of God to the Corinthians in this way. He says, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. So let us plug into the weakness of God through prayer, worship, and receiving the holy mysteries and sacraments so that we can be strong in him. Amen.